Several years ago, I discovered this drainage swale in Providence's North Burial Ground hosts a breeding population of Fowler's toads. More recently, as a result of my involvement with the Green Infrastructure Coalition, I have been studying how this pond goes up and down in response to rain and how that affects the life in it. Many amphibian populations in Rhode Island require ponds that have water at the right time of year and are dry at other times of year. The early winter was mild, but after January 27th, we got a lot of cold and snow. In fact, it was actually pretty hard to get out and get pictures in February because of the weather. March 11th gave us our first signs of spring, a little meltwater on the top of the swale. The drainage swale drains this road primarily. By the 13th of March, we were in full meltdown. Here you can see how much the water has already fallen in a week. Consider the pond full when the water reaches to the edge of the mowed grass. This pond is about 18 inches deep when full. Some evidence that in southern New England, ponds that are about 18 inches deep work quite well as amphibian habitat for certain of our vulnerable populations. It stayed dry through almost all of April. It takes about a half inch rain to bring the pond up this much. By early May, the pond was almost dry again. By May 9th, it was dry. It seems that tadpoles get a respite from predators if the ponds go dry occasionally. Some years that Fowler's toads start breeding in early May. This year they could not. Instead we got a lesson in resilience and flexibility. Between May 31st and June 2nd, Providence received over two inches of rain. This confluence of roads has a chute, and all of the water in the drainage trail enters through that chute, except what immediately falls on the pond. As soon as there was water in the pond, mating season began. Among the first things you could see once there was water were mosquito larvae. Females leave the pond after laying their eggs. The males hang out all night. By June 10th, the first of the tadpoles had arrived. More hatchlings every day. We 
with no additional rain, by June 13th, the pond was almost dry. The tadpoles were squeezed into ever smaller puddles. And when the puddle dried up that afternoon, all of the tadpoles died. On June 15th, it rained and the swale filled again. And breeding season started all over again. No tadpoles yet. More rain. One week after breeding season restarted, the tadpoles have emerged. Bowser's toads dig burrows into the sand hills near the pond. Here's a close-up of the chute where all the water is heading down into the swale off the road. Note the different sizes and age classes of the tadpole. Around the 1st of July, mating season ended. But the tadpoles kept hatching. July, pickerel weed starts to really dominate the pond, and the purple flowers attract incredible numbers of insects. In mid-July, there was plenty of water, but the vegetation was so thick it was almost impossible to see the tadpoles. very high water, the tadpoles are able to swim where normally it's just mowed grass. I call this tadpoles on parade. In mid-July, many of the tadpoles had good-sized legs. Did you notice how much the pond has shrunk in the last four days? first of the toads. At the height of summer we had dragonflies, an abundant evidence that despite the setbacks, the Fowler's toads had had a successful year. Towards the end of July, bullfrogs started coming over from a nearby pond to hunt in the drainage swale. Bullfrogs are voracious predators and tadpoles are not used to being hunted, so it can be quite a problem. It didn't turn out to be much of a problem this year, and this is the only bullfrog I was able to catch up to on the film. Normally you just see him splash away before you can get him focused. <laughs> on August 11th was pretty much the last of the month and after that the pond started shrinking again. As it shrinks you get to see these little toads in the grass. I love this picture because in the, the same grass, exactly the same, a week before had tadpoles swimming around in it.
By this time in the month, the pond was getting pretty low. And by the 28th, you could practically walk out all the way to the center, dry shod. The pond held water this year from June 15th to September 1st, plenty for an entire Fowler's Toad breeding cycle. And dry enough so that next spring, the toads will get a good head start on the predators. September 10th it rained. You can't see that there's much water in that shot, but you sure can in this one. You can really see that the pickerel weed is dying back for the winter. This fall picture shows how patchily distributed the vegetation is in the pond. After the dry spell, we got a big storm, and from the looks of it, the water was running through the chute quite quickly. From this point on, as the rains come or go, the pond dries out, gets full again, but there's not much living in it anymore. The insects are mostly gone, the little creatures, the isopods you can hardly see, the tadpoles are of course gone. From here on, the pond will just drift into winter. And I'll just watch it occasionally while I wait for life to come back in the spring.